Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this video I'll show you how to use a motor with your Raspberry Pi. By the end of this tutorial you'll be able to control the movement of a motor, you'll understand the basic principles of how that motor is controlled, and you'll be able to decipher a simple Python program. But first let me explain. Whilst the Pi is a truly incredible device that enables you to do some awesome real world computing, such as turn on LEDs and use buttons, it lacks the ability to control things such as light bulbs, lava lamps, and motors, for example. Why does it lack the ability? Because the Pi's GPIO pins, the pins we use to control the outside world, can only supply 3.3 volts at a maximum of 50 milliamps of current. Whilst that is perfect for a low power LED or button, it is nowhere near enough to power a motor which, for a small motor, may need 6 volts at 100 milliamps. But do not worry, as there are plenty of easy ways to remedy this minor problem, the easiest of which is to use a switching device like a relay or transistor. What these components do is allow for you to make a circuit with an external power supply and a motor, and then make another circuit that uses the GPIO pins to turn the circuit with the motor in it on and off. In the middle of these two circuits, there is of course our switching device. This is really useful and what we shall be using today in order to get our motor up and running. So, now let's see what we will need. Of course need a Raspberry Pi with the Raspbian operating system and also the rpi.gpo Python library installed. If you don't have it installed, then check out my using the GPO videos where I show you how to install it. As this is a motor tutorial, you'll of course need a motor of any size or shape, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to be using this one that you can easily purchase on eBay for a couple of pounds. Uh, it's a geared motor that works very nicely off of 6 volts and also has this handy tyre attached to it, which makes it perfect for any robotics projects. As mentioned before, you're going to need an external power supply for your motor. So this could be a bench supply or it could be a battery pack. As my motor is rated at 6 volts, I'm going to be using 4 AA batteries in a battery holder. So this is what I'm going to be using. Battery holders are easily available on eBay for a couple of pounds but make sure that you get the right one for your motor. Moving on, now we come to our actual switching device, this module board here, the L298N motor controller. This tutorial is going to be for the L298N in module form. You can get the chip on its own, but personally I think it's a lot harder to use. Where can I buy one of these? Just like with the motor and the battery holder, these are easily available on eBay for a couple of pounds. I'll explain how they work in a second. You're also going to need four female to female jumper wires like this. So if you watch some of my other tutorials you'll realize that we use male to female jumper wires and that we haven't used these before but you will need them and these are easily available on eBay or Tandy online. That brings me to the next thing that you will need which is two of our normal male to female jumper wires which I just said if you've seen some of my other tutorials we've used them before. Also, make sure that you can connect to your motor's terminals. This motor has two jumper wires attached to it, but if your motor doesn't have anything connected to the terminals then you're most likely going to need to solder some wire onto it. I'm sure that you could do this with less female to female jumper wires, but I think that this is easiest just because it cuts out the need for a breadboard. That's all that you'll need, now let's move on to having a look at our motor controller. So how to wire up your motor controller, here's a little information about it. As I said before, in order to control things like motors, we need a switching device. The L298N is made out of a collection of transistors, and the transistors are arranged into what is known as an H-bridge. I won't go into detail because there are already so many great resources on the internet, but the most important thing to know is that what the H-bridge allows is for us to be able to control the motor's direction, not just whether it's on or off. The L298N can control two motors at any one time, and therefore it's good for two-wheeled robots. Say you need to control four motors, then you can just add another L298N to your setup. They're fairly inexpensive. Now let's move on to wiring up our motor. Let me say that this can be quite confusing, and if you lose your way at any time, don't worry, because there's going to be an easy to follow schematic at the end of this. On your screens now, you're seeing a labelled diagram of what each pin on our L298N does. The first thing we're going to connect to the module is our motor's terminals. For me, it's these two wires here. 
So, using a flathead screwdriver, like this one, unscrew each of the screw terminals of output A, and output A are these two screw terminals here. So I'm just going to insert my screwdriver and unscrew these. Once you've unscrewed them, you can insert each of your motor's jump wires into it like this. It doesn't matter which jump wire goes into each terminal. Now that they're inserted, simply grab your flathead screwdriver and tighten it up again. Give your motor a firm tug and they shouldn't fall out. That's how you know that you've wired it up correctly. Let's connect our motor's power source. The pin that is labelled plus 12 volts is for our power supply. The name is a little bit misleading. It can be for any voltage. In my case, I'm going to unscrew it. So it is, move my battery back out of the way, it's this pin here, this screw terminal. Simply unscrew it. And then what I'm going to do is plug the red lead from my battery pack into it, like this. Just like with the motor terminals, make sure that's nice and firmly inserted. And once it is, simply grab your flathead screwdriver and tighten it up again. And again, it shouldn't fall out. The ground of our battery pack. That, funnily enough, goes into the screw terminal labelled ground, this middle one here. But we also need to put the ground of the pie in there. So, let's grab our pie. I'm going to put mine over here. And then also, grab a male, one of your male to female jumper wires. I've got this one here. And then, plug your female end of your male to female jumper wire into pin 6 on the pie, which is this one up here. And that is ground. So, I'm just going to plug this in here. Like that. Then you can put your pie down. And then, what we're going to do is insert both the ground of our battery pack and the ground of our Pi into the ground screw terminal on our L29A10. So I'm going to put the ground of my battery pack in first. So once that's in, then grab the ground of your Pi, and then insert that in there as well. And you should be able to fit both in, no problem. Once they're both in, grab your flathead screwdriver and tighten it up. And that's ground sorted. Our ground battery pack and motor wired up, we can finally go on to the last screw terminal, which is this one down here. And as you may be able to see, it says that it's plus five volts. And you may be wondering what this is for. This is actually for the plus five volts of power that the L29A10 needs to function. And luckily our Pi is able to supply that. So let's go ahead and unscrew it. Once you've unscrewed it, Grab your last male to female jumper wire, like this, and then insert it into pin 2 on the Pi, which is plus 5 volts. So pin 2 is just 2 above ground, so this pin here. Make sure it's nice and firmly inserted. And then grab the male end, and just like with ground, insert it into plus 5 volts. Once you've done that, Simply grab your flathead screwdriver again and tighten it up. And that's all of the screw terminals wired up on our L29A10. Now we need to have a look at these pins down here, the male pins, and these are what we actually use to control our motor. I just said these male pins on the L29A10 are how we actually control our motor. I doubt you'll be able to see, but they're labelled ENA, ENB, and inputs 1 to 4. In order to control a motor, we need to set both pins of ENA to high. You may have worked out that it stands for enable, and that's essentially what it does. It just enables output A. We're only using one motor, so we only need to turn on ENA. We don't need to worry about ENB, which are these two pins down here, and you only need to turn those pins high if you're using output B for, say, another motor. Once ENA is turned on, then we can use the inputs. Ignore inputs 3 and 4 because we won't be using them as they are for if you need a second motor. 
The way the L298M works is that if you turn input 1 on and then input 2 off, then the motor will start to spin. If you turn input 1 off and then input 2 on, then the motor will spin the other way. And this is why using an H-bridge device like the L298N is really useful. That said, let's wire up ENA. We're going to need two female-to-female -female jumper wires, like this. And first, with one of them, insert one of the female ends into either pin of ENA. It doesn't really matter. And then pin 7 on our Pi. So as things are getting a pretty pretty hectic down here because of all the wires, I'm just going to bring my Pi up here. And pin 7 is the fourth down on the left, also called GPIO4. Like that. Now, grab your other female to female jumper wire and insert it into the other pin of ENA. And then plug it into pin 11, which is very close to pin 7. It's the second one down from it, in fact. Like that. And that's ENA enabled. Now we have our enable pins wired up, we can finally wire up our input pins, the ones that actually control the direction of the motor. To do this, grab your last two female to female jumper wires, and then plug one of them into input one on our l 298 and then pin 13 on the Pi. Make sure they're both nice and firmly inserted. And finally, we can insert our last female to female jump wire. And we're going to put that into input 2 of our L298A10. And then pin 15 on the Pi. Like this. And make sure that's nice and firmly inserted. And that is it. Quite complicated, but now we have our motor wired up, we have our battery pack wired up, and we have our Pi wired up. Here's a quick diagram. So now that we have our L298 wired up, we can actually program our motor. So, turn on your Pi and log in, and then boot into the desktop environment with the command start x. Once you're there, open up a Python editor. I recommend using the default idle, which is down here, so double click on that. And you should see the Python shell appear, something similar to this. And for you, what you're going to do is click on file, and then new window. I don't need to do this because I've already programmed the program I'm going to be using, and I'm just going to go to recent files. So, here is our program. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You can find the code and all the other information from this tutorial in the description below. So don't worry, you're not going to have to copy out those 20 plus lines. And I'll just explain what it does in a nutshell. So, it just makes our motor spin one way for two seconds. Then it makes it spin the other way for two seconds. Then it makes the motor stop completely for another two seconds. And then it does that over and over. But let's go through that in Python so you can see how our, our program actually works. So these two lines here just import the necessary modules. So we're importing the rpi.gpio module so we can interface with the Pi's GPIO pins. And we're also importing the time module so we can use delays. And these next five lines, they simply set up the pins that we are using as outputs. And that's very important because Otherwise, the Pi wouldn't know what to do with them, essentially. This, these next two lines, you might recognize those pin numbers, 11 and 7, because uh, they're the pins that we wired up to ENA. And you might remember that I said that we had to enable those, otherwise the motor wouldn't spin. So I've just set both of those to true. And now for the main body of code, this while loop here. And essentially what a while loop does, it just goes around and around until you intervene. So it's set up into sort of couples of lines um, and the first two lines here 
simply set one input one to true and then input two on our L29A10 to false and that just makes our motor spin as I said one way for two seconds and then these next two lines are almost identical but inverted so it spins the other way for two seconds and then these two lines are different because both of our statements are false and that means that the motor doesn't spin at all and that does that for two seconds as well and as I said before very simple program uh, you shouldn't need to worry about if you're not a very experienced programmer because I'm pretty sure that most of you will be able to get your head around this no problem at all for the more advanced programmers why don't you try to adapt my code by putting in functions anyway once you have your Python program looking like my one then save it as motor.py into any place you want uh, I've saved mine in Python programs which is a folder on my desktop and then what we're going to do is double click the terminal don't try to run your program in the Python shell because it won't work as idle doesn't have root privileges. So once the terminal is up and going, change directory to where your Python program is saved. For me, I, all I have to do is change, change directory cd to desktop forward slash Python programs, making sure that you spell wherever you're going correctly. And then hit return and you should, you should see no error messages and that means that you're in the correct directory. And once we're there, all we have to do is enable our program. So you do that with this line of code here, sudo python motor.py and then hit return. And immediately you should hear your motor start to spin. So I'm sure you can hear my one. Why don't we go give that a look then? As you can see, our program has performed flawlessly, and now we have a very happy motor. But what happens when you've had enough of the endless spinning? Simply hit Ctrl and C on your keyboard, and that should kill the program. So I've just done it now, and as you can see, our motor stopped spinning. That's it for this tutorial, but we've covered a lot of new ground. Personally, I think interfacing with motors is one of the coolest things that you can do with the Pi, and I've made many robots with motors similar to this one. Well, that might be a hint about the not-so-distant future. Anyway, as I said before, all of the code and information, including where to buy these items, is in the description below, so please do give that a look. Thanks go out to forum members Joan, Mike Double R, and also Sirius Hardware. If you've had any problems with this tutorial, or need any help with the Raspberry Pi, then do not hesitate to email me at theraspberrypi.gmail.com, or comment below. I'll try to get back to you within a week. That's all for now, but don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Until next time.